and forth. Um, we needed to add this in um, almost manually, and because of that, we're checking now to make sure that uh, dialog uh, has its dialog speaker tags, that figure heads have like their figure head number um, tags. In this case, we don't have fig HN because we're not numbering our figures, but if you were, you'd have a fig HN as the character style for that. And that's what that search is actually um, looking for. Right, so having gone through the document and knowing that everything is composed as it should be, um, we are, um, you know, okay to proceed from this point on. Right, um, the Unicode search is a search is a search that we um, already sort of uh, handled when we looked at it in the hub and made sure that every uh, character, um, every entity, was a proper Unicode en entity. If you don't have uh, proper Unicode entity entities, they'll come up as, um, not as errors, but as, for example, you'll have something called a private area use character. It'll look like just a little square box um, on file stats in the digital hub. Um, and then you would actually search for that and fix that and make it the proper Unicode uh, character, right? So uh, we've already gone through that. So we're gonna go ahead and you know move on to the next one. Before I do, does anybody have any questions about Unicode or or how it works at this stage, because you know, it's a big, broad topic, but at least in composition. Okay. So we'll proceed forward. So we'll mark that as checked. We'll have looked at our file. We know um, that our file, based on our check and file stats, has Unicode characters as it should. So we'll move down here and check that. And again here, fig HN, DISPK, EN num, um, any of these special character styles, there's this specific check for those, right? So the one up here uh, checks for it throughout, as I mentioned with rendering, making sure that italics are rendered as R, composed as I, bold as B, and so on and so forth. And here again, it's sort of just reminding you, check those specific character styles, um, like, you know, DISPK, fig HN, EN num in the, in the notes. I'll let Tim handle uh, the chat while we continue forward. And so now we're going to actually talk about images, right? And how they are treated in this file. The next check is to check that um, image callouts have been placed where they need to be placed. So wherever there was an image and we want an image to exist, we need to have that image callout present there. So we'll go back to our file and you can easily search for, I'll go straight to the top, you can search for uh, the image callouts by just searching for, um, and I'll bring up this box here, which is the same thing that comes up on the Mac, right? And you can actually just search for tilde im, and that will take you, um, if you use the, um, um, the SAI to place in your image callouts, you'll see them uh, come up here until we'll, we see that we have our logo, present in our title page as we needed to. And then we have our one figure. We know that's the only figure that we have here. Um, and so it came up here and it's properly placed where we want it to be placed. Um, if, for example, you do a quick search and you're like, wait a second, I've now jumped from figure one to figure three, where's figure two? Now would be the time to either indicate to the person composing it to go ahead and you know, fix that, add figure two wherever it needs to go or to fix it yourself if that is what you're so inclined to do. Again, we always recommend feedback. And so we've gone ahead and che checked our figures. We know that our image callouts have been placed where they need to be placed. And you can just see how this, this check might take a little bit longer in an image intensive book, uh, but it's still not something that's gonna take um, an incredible amount of time as you're just checking to make sure that the images are placed where they need to be. So we'll go ahead and mark that. And so the figureheads and captions, oftentimes uh, figureheads and captions go after the image, but we've seen it happen where, you know, an author wants the figure uh, head uh, to go above the image and the figure caption below or the figure attribute below. And this is something that you will have determined um, ahead of time and you would at this point check to make sure that the figurehead and uh, figure captions, <clears throat> excuse me, or uh, figure attributes are placed where they need to uh, be placed in 
relation to the figure and the rest of the text. In our case, we only have one fig H and we want it right under our figure. So that is where it's placed. We have our fig and then our fig H or figure head. And so at this point, you see um, your figure head there. So the file checks up here, and we'll just discuss this briefly, um, just a, a little refresher. Uh, the file checks here, uh, what that does is that it goes to the document and actually checks for uh, certain things that it's programmed to check for. These same checks appear on the digital hub. The reason we have people, especially when they're training, do both, do file check and also do the digital hub, is because it just serves as an extra filter to catch any errors or anything um, in that instance, right? Once you become an expert in file checks, you actually, um, excuse me, in composition, you actually don't have to use um, file checks. You can actually go right to the hub and use that as a method of checking your file. Does that make a little bit more sense? Or? And so we only have one figurehead in our file. And because we only have that one figurehead and we want it after the figure, we know that it's placed properly. It's placed properly in context um, with the surrounding text. We know that's okay. So we go ahead and mark that. And so now we're checking for tables and tabs, right? Um, when um, you're working in a composed file, you should have all your tables formatted according to Word's um, table format, which is what we'll see down here. We know this is our only table. So it should be in a Word table. It should not be in a tabbed, um, you know, like in a tabbed list or anything like that. It should just be in a Word table because the hub can handle that and it can handle that throughout the various conversion um, procedures, right? And so um, you always want to have deal with your tables as if they were Word tables. It also makes it easier to check um, and makes it easier to avoid um, like messing around with things because oftentimes if you have something with like a tab in between, you might change some text or something along the way. And what will happen is, is like you'll, um, you'll lose some of the uh, intended formatting. So in this case, we know our table is in Word table format. We can tell by the borders surrounding it. So we're gonna go back to our QC checklist. And we know that the paragraph styles are attached, are applied to each line. But if we click in here, we can see up here in the top left in this quick access bar, that TD is applied to each and every one of these. And so now, oftentimes in a, co in a composed file, you shouldn't have tabs except in certain places. Sometimes you can have them in the table of contents um, and um, in number lists. So you have like one or bulleted list. So you'll have the list leader followed by a tab and then the text. Um, usually anywhere else, that a tab exists, um, it's usually wrong. So you would wanna check for your tabs uh, throughout and make sure that only one tab is being used, if, especially if, if you're using it in the TOC or in numbered or unnumbered lists. So we're gonna go through and we're gonna check for tabs. Well, when I was checking for this, I'll just note one thing that you'll often see a lot in an example of what we would call an incorrect tab is like if your author you know, um, used tabs for paragraph indents. You know, the mm -hmm. first line paragraph indent. That's something we don't want to use a tab for. We want to control that through other means. And if it's already gone through composition, it shouldn't have those first paragraph indent tabs in it. Right, right. And sometimes we've seen um, tabs in the middle of a paragraph because of, you know, yeah. just an issue with the author and that those should also be gone. Those are usually pretty safe to delete. So here um, I'm using uh, Word's um, wildcard search for tabs, which is caret T. Um, and so uh, you, when you search for that, you'll see, okay, I have tabs in my numbered list, but as I said before, I can have them there. They, they should be there, right? And on my unnumbered list here also have tabs, but again, they don't exist anywhere else in the, in the document, so I am okay. Um, in the table of contents, sometimes, as you can see, yeah, there's a little note in the, um, in the, in the actual list item that you're searching for in this list. And it says that, you know, you can have it in the table of contents. That's usually the only other place where a tab should exist, table of contents or in lists. Outside of that, tabs are usually uh, wrong or, or misplaced. Um, so we'll go here and mark that. 
And so again, here's one of those things where it's like, if it depends on where your project is going. If your project is not going to be typeset, uh, which for the OTN purposes, uh, that's not the case, right? If your project is going just to ebook only, you would want to make sure um, that there are no tabs because tabs when converted to, um, to SML and then off into ebook, uh, they're, they're, they're just spaces. Right, so they don't really serve the purpose that they're serving there. So in our case, it's not an ebook only project, so we can just mark that and say, I don't need to look at that. And so now we get into these regular expressions. And again, we'll give you the sort of this warning and little primer uh, before these regular expressions have already been set up. You do not need to know what they're actually searching for. We'll get more in depth into these um, as we're um, moving along and once we get to the ebook section of our um, class or the ebook module, right? So in this case, um, this is actually uh, performing what we call text checks, right? And what this does is that it makes sure that, you know, the, the integrity of the actual text of the file is okay and that we haven't done something while we were composing and whatnot. So again, I'm going to be running these expressions. I'm going to show you what they're going to find. Um, and sometimes they might not find anything because, you know, our file, uh, should be well composed, right? Um, but um, you do not need to know exactly what they say. You're gonna see a lot of numbers in there and if you don't have a familiarity with regular expressions, it might seem overwhelming, but do not worry, we will get into them, um, just not at this time because in this case, what you would actually want to do is just use this and look for what we're going to be um, searching for. Um, so um, again, do not worry about the gobbledygook that you might see if you don't know code, right, um, when we do the regular expressions. So in order to do um, these text checks, and this is the last part of our uh, QC procedure, we need to convert the docx uh, file to SAM, right, and we use the digital hub for that. So what we're going to do, we're going to take our file. This is the file that we've been checking. We know for sure that everything else has been checked and we've gone ahead and fixed whatever we needed to fix or at least written down notes for the person com uh, composing it. So we're gonna go ahead and save our file. I hit Control S there uh, to save. I'm gonna close out of that. Then I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go back up to the top here. Go over to the digital hub. I'm actually gonna open this up in a new tab. I did this by just right clicking on digital hub and opening that up on a new tab. Um, that way I don't lose the QC and I don't have to jump back and forth. Um, but you are more than welcome to just click on digital hub there. I'm gonna to go to my project, which is the one where we actually pulled the file that we're checking from. From We're gonna go ahead and click on that. And it's gonna take us here, the hub will actually um, overwrite a file if it's named the same way. Um, so you don't need to like delete the file and then upload again. You're welcome to do that if you like, if you're a little paranoid, sometimes I do that. Um, but um, you know, you don't need to, the hub will actually overwrite that file. And Tim, I, I think you wanted to say something. Follow yeah, me. just as a, um, it, so Elvis is gonna run these tech checks in Sublime. Mm -hmm. Sublime is the thing that I think some of you guys have and some other people did not. I know we, we were pushing it off until until later because there was a lot of stuff coming at us. So I think if you don't have it installed, that's fine for right now. We're just going to kind of watch Elvis do it. If you don't have it installed, but feel free to follow along if you mm -hmm. do have it installed. Mm -hmm. Correct. So I'll go here to upload. Again, click in here. Find my file. Hit open. It'll appear here. Upload files. The files will upload and you will see that I don't have two files, I just have the one because the hub overwrites files that are named the same or of the same type, right? And then I'm going to convert this to SAM. The conversion is actually really simple. I just gotta make sure that Word, because it's the only file type that we have selected here, is selected. So MS Word is our only option. And then I'm going to click on this right drop down and click SAM. Remember that SAM stands for Scribe Abbreviated Markup. It is an in-between file um, in conversion. And we actually use it for this purpose to be able to do perform these tech checks, text checks without um, having to go all the way to SCML, uh, which has uh, certain differences from this file. Um, we're not gonna worry too much about the settings because all I need is I just need the SAM file so I can run these text checks. So we don't have to worry about the settings right now. The default settings should be fine. Right, and then I'm gonna go ahead and hit convert. Okay. 
And you will see now that I have a SAM file, right? Notice that here. And the hub actually performs a check on the SAM file as well. Um, and so it's giving me the green go ahead. So it's like, okay, this file's good, right? And so I'm gonna go ahead and download that file. 